In this video, I will talk about the relationship between log and e, and how to use that relationship to solve a real-life problem. One of the universal topics in almost all science is change. Once we observe how one thing changes with the other, we can find out one based on the other. The two things can be status and time, for example. So if we know how status changes with time, we can use that to figure out one from the other. For example, the relationship between distance and time. The simplest case is uniform motion, where per unit time change of distance is constant. In that case, the relationship is straightforward, and we can easily back out time from distance. But another common case is the exponential one, where the per-unit time change is no longer constant. In fact, it can be greater and greater, or smaller and smaller. It's typical when we are dealing with status such as population, sizes, amounts, and etc. But if you view it not from the absolute sense, instead in terms of the rate of change, then it's constant. Per-unit time. It becomes constant multiples of the prior one, so we end up with the exponential relationship between the status and time. Now, solving this is no longer a simple division problem. A real-life application is the carbon dating technique, where the amount of carbon-14 is used to date artifacts. It's invented by the American chemist Wheeler Lippi. He won the Nobel Prize in 1960 for that. Simply speaking, these artifacts have carbon-14 atoms, which will decay over time. You can measure the speed of decay. Then the original amount will go through that decay for a certain time to become the final amount. So now we have an exponential relationship between time and status. To solve this, let's consider a special case. Say, two to the power of what gives you fifty? A straightforward method is the trial and error method. It's called numerical method because there is no general rule of solving. You just start with a guess. Say we start with a guess of x b five. Try that out. We get thirty two. We know it's not the answer, so we keep going by taking small step at a time. We try a power of five point zero one. We get slightly greater number. Keep trying till we get 5.64. This time, it gets as close to 50. If you try the next one, it gets a little bit over 50. So we can say that the answer is roughly 5.64. This method should be the last resort if you don't have better options, because it has some issues. First, there is no guarantee you will always find the answer. If you start with the wrong initial guess, then you will be moving further and further away from the truth. Or even if you start all right, but the step too big, you might also miss the answer. The other problem is it's time-consuming, and you have no control over that, because it will only stop till you get an answer, but you have no idea when that will be. Actually, even evaluating this exponential term could be complex. You can break it down into an integer power term and a real power term. The integer one is easy to do; you just multiply two five times. But what is this two to the power of point zero one? We end up with another puzzle, asking us what number y is when multiplied by itself a hundred times will give you two. Again, there is no general rule in solving this, so we start with a guess and see how that goes. If it's not good. Then we move on to the next guess and the next, till we get an answer close to two. Here we might stop and claim that it's roughly 1.006956. Then we use it to evaluate this exponential term to get 32.22258, and that's just one evaluation. Of course, there are other try and error methods that are better than the one here. But we have a better way by using the relationship between e and log. Let's see how to do that. If we change the base here from two to e, then what is x? 
we know that one unit growing continuously at a rate of r will become e to the power of r. We also know that log is the operation that will give us back the growth rate. So if we do log operation on the final result, we should get the rate r. So that means what's on top of e can be extracted by doing log operation on the final result. Hence log 50, and we know how to compute log. But unfortunately, we have two here instead of e. So can we convert it to a base of e? We know that one unit growing continuously will become two units. So log 2 is the growth rate. We know that the growth rate can be put on top of e to express the final outcome. So 2 can be written as e to the power of log 2. Hence, we can rewrite a base 2 problem in terms of base e as e to the power of log 2, then raised to the power of x. These two powers can be combined as a product. So the power term becomes log 2 times x. Use that on top of e gives us 50. To see why the power terms can be multiplied, we use a simple example. 5 squared, then raised to the power of 3, equals to 5 to the power of 6. Okay? Then we take log on both sides. The log operation on the left side is only symbolic, because we know whatever on top of e falls off. So we know it should be log 2 times x equals to log 50. This way, we get x as a ratio of the two logs. Remember, we have a method to compute any log. So we use this formula to compute log 50 and log 2 to get a final answer. In reality, we could have any base for an exponential relationship. So for the more general case, we call that x as the logarithm of y with base b. When the base is e, people gives it a special name, ln, and the base can be omitted. This is the natural log. Natural log deserves special attention because any base b will be converted to e to the power of log b. So the original base b problem becomes a base e problem. This way, any log can be calculated as the ratio of the two natural logs. The natural log can be computed directly. Remember in school we were taught to use the calculator. It has natural log function. This way, calculator only needs to be wired to do the natural log operation. You can combine them to calculate log for any basis. So unlike the uniform change, where time is the ratio of status and velocity. In the exponential case, it's the ratio of the two lines.